Hello and welcome to this cryptocurrency technical analysis where together we're going to be jumping straight into the Bitcoin chart and I'm going to be going over in depth the exact reasons why I am now in this new $1.4 million short position. And as I said, I'm going to explain the exact reasons why I took this trade and the exact targets that I'm looking for next. So we're going to be going over a lot of information within this video. So I recommend that you pay full attention. If you want, get out your notepads, record the same levels on your trading view account, but make sure you are as prepared as I am for the rest of this month to come. The levels that I will be covering are going to be coming into play for sure in December. For the next two weeks, you need to have these levels marked out and you need to be as prepared as I am for what's to come. OK, so as I said, I said we're going to start off by explaining this one point four million dollar short position currently sat in around sixty two thousand dollars profit. OK, so I want to start off with that and let's add on the technical analysis that we have on here. So straight away, you can see some important levels marked on the chart. But I want to start explaining this move up here. OK, this obviously ended in a failed auction. The FA. This is obviously something we were looking at inside of our last video, right? I was making it very clear at the time of that recording. I had no short positions open. OK, I was in a long and I was looking for higher. I was very confident in that we would get higher prices and those higher prices obviously came and it was that level i was placing a lot of emphasis on obviously within the discord within that youtube video here on the champions you know at the time saying still you know there's no short trades for me at the time of this post no short trades at the moment i'm still waiting for that failed auction 18,120. i just want to emphasize so everybody here understands by no short trades i mean no shorts open from the past month OK, so for the past month, I had no shorts open at that time. I closed them all. Why? Because I was looking for higher prices. I still have the shorts from 69,000, 52,000, 48,000 dollars, etc. open. They are higher term time frame swing short trades. Until we see a high term time frame sign of strength, I'm not going to close those there yet. OK, so I still have the higher term time frame swing shorts open, but I had no shorts open from the past month of price action. Why? Because I was still looking for that big 18,120 level okay something that was quite interesting here is that that same level and that same liquidity okay if you look on bitstamp if you look on binance was actually sat around 18,230 okay so this was just our region and our discrepancies between exchanges but overall i was just going for that high level of liquidity right i was looking for that swing failure pan or failed auction now i'm going to explain exactly what's going on here why that's brought us down in price and then as i said the exact targets that i'm looking for over the next few weeks to come so first of all explain this what happened here so actually this although on the four hour chart here it looks like a basic swing failure pattern right could have traded it like that if you're a swing trader but if you come down on a lower term time frame it ended in a failed auction what is a failed auction if you don't know basically what it means is price comes above that high spends a little bit of time above before a move back down OK, this was a much harder trade. This was a very difficult trade to take. OK, um, so if you missed it, it's absolutely no worries in the world. OK, but basically what happened here, we come down on a lower term time frame. You can see we breach above that level, spend a little bit of time, come back down. That is a failed auction. We can go. I can actually cover a lot of theory and educational material on on failed auctions, the exact order flow that you're looking for. But I'm going to cover that in, a, in another video. But for now, you can just know that this is a failed auction. OK, so what's the difference between a swing failure pattern? That's a simple come up straight back down below. What's the failed auction? You come up, spend a little bit of time and then you come back down. The failed auction is actually a much more bearish play out because you gather a lot more liquidity and a lot more trapped traders up at that high. Why? Because you spend more time. OK, so upon seeing that you have to react. You absolutely have to react once seen either or here on the lower term time frame the failed auction i mean if you're on the higher term time frame the swing failure pattern you have to acknowledge this is now switched to being bearish okay so while we had those targets of higher such as 18,120 okay while we're looking for those higher prices while we're in no short positions at this time and we are locally bullish for higher once we have then got higher prices we have then seen that failed auction and swing failure pattern we have to react imagine if i had then you know we had seen that price action and then we're just saying 
yeah, I'm not going to do anything here. I'm just going to, hey, we've done a failed auction. We've done a swing forward pattern. I'm just going to not do anything here now. No, you have to obviously react, right? You have to be able to say, well, we've now seen the reaction we're looking for. That is bearish. We got to take our next trade. And for me, that was this short position which actually has now been compounded a few different times. Originally started off at $500,000, then I moved it up to 1 million, and now it's on, yeah, about 1 point, basically $1.5 million in this current short position that I'm in. Okay, so it was a few different compounds. Um, but the reason why I took this was originally as a hedged short trade, and then it become compounded. Why? Because I started to recognize the weakness, and I got a pretty nice lower term time frame back test which I decided to compound on. Okay, so that, that's the exact reasons why I took that trade. Primarily, after seeing the reaction of the big important level that I had very much emphasized I'm ready and waiting for many, many, many times I was saying about this level, all about the, you know, swing fair pattern of failed auction 18120. Well, we finally get that swing fair pattern failed auction of 18120. I then see the reaction, recognize that's bearish, as well as the ES pulling back very heavily, which obviously was great confluence, took that trade and now, yes, yeah, sat in around $60,000 profit. So as I said, that's the reasons. And now I'm going to explain what I'm looking for next. I hope that you understood and or, or at least comprehend the basic reasons for um, that, that trade. Again, I can go in more depth on another video on this. But for now, I just want you to understand why I took that short. Why I was able to switch my bias from bullish after then getting higher, getting the reaction, switching to bearish. Trading the charts, trading the reactions. And that is what we do at Chart Champions. It's the only way you can actually make money trading. OK, so now I'm going to explain what I'm looking for next and the targets that I have in terms of support. And I'll also give some resistance levels OK, for you to be aware of. There's actually just two announcements that I'd like to give before I move on to what's happening next. The first is a little bit of, you know, also talking about this move to the downside, as you've probably seen. Um, you know, there's been a lot of this sort of bad news coming out now about Binance. Obviously, the whole one of the main reasons that we saw the original move down was here. At the start of November was because of FTX. And now a lot of bad news and FUD has been coming out, obviously, about Binance. Um, so this is just something to be aware of. This is influencing some of the price action here. You know, I've said for a long time that I don't trust FT FTX or Binance. So this is something just to be aware of. Uh, you know, a lot of big accounts are talking about this. It's obviously the Senate. They're, 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 you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that's being talked about here. And it's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, I just I think at the end of the day, the safest thing that you can do is obviously have your um your you know your crypto off ex off an exchange like off of totally offline on a, on a wallet. So if you want full you know security in that regards, well, one of the safest ways would I imagine would be an offline account you know offline wallet. So that's just something that I was personally aware of. Okay, that's going on here in terms of bad news to do with Binance. Obviously, this is affecting BNB and everything, right? Um, so that's just one thing that I wanted to talk about. And the second is actually a little bit more positive, <laughs> And that is um, that we've given away another $5,000. And this time it's to feeding families. So I'm just going to remind you, obviously, Chart Champions, we decided to give away $100,000. And that was because, hey, we've done a lot of good trades recently, stuff like this, you know, $60,000 in a few days of trading. We decided to give back in a time of need for a lot of people, um, you know. It's a nice thing to do, we think. So, yeah, we've given away, obviously, an original donation. Now we're giving away another one. So that's now up to 10,000 given away. And this time it was to feeding families. So they're going the extra mile to see those in need that they also get a nice Christmas dinner. So I recommend, well, I mean, it's up to you, but if you are also feeling the spirit then you can also take a look at least at the charity and maybe decide if you'd like to also give a donation to them as well um but yeah this is something that we really like it's uh good work to see that they're doing helping out a lot of people and uh you know we, we think this is a really really nice charity to support so yeah that was our next donation that we've made and of course we've still got a lot more money to give away we've only given away a small percentage so far ten thousand pounds and we've got a lot more to give so um, yeah keep an eye on our socials if you'd like to track the more donations that we're making um so yeah that was the two announcements that i wanted to make and now i'm going to move on to as i said um exactly what i'm looking for next so um you can see I actually have a few important levels marked out here in terms of support. I've got like two barriers. Right? I like to refer to these as, as little barriers that I've got on the way down. First one here is at this daily NPOC level. And just like I was waiting for a failed auction or swing fair pattern here, I'm going to be looking for the same 
type of theory down at this low okay i'd like to see that failed auction swing failure pattern into this zone okay if i get that i get a trade set up if we do not get a failed auction or swing failure pattern and we simply break through that level with no reaction well then i'll look for my next zone which way i'd look for the same type of theory down at this low here onto the bigger range point of control onto that monthly npoc so for me, it's always a game of level to level trading. I need to check the level, check the reaction and make an informed decision. I am aware, by the way, of what we're finding support at right now. And it is around that old NPOC zone where you have just hit, which was around 69.50 and NPOC. So I'm aware why we're finding temporary support at the moment. OK, but if we lose this NPOC, I'm looking for yeah, this barrier first around the um, 16800 if we lose that again it's a reactionary base trade if we get a nice you know if we get a reaction such as this well then I can sculpt a long trade right or I can take some profits on my short okay or alternatively we get no reaction I'll look down towards my next bar around 16500 and then it's a level to level game right 16200 so for me uh, those would be my next barriers of support to the downside in terms of resistance it's a little bit more easily defined Okay, 16400. Okay, I'm looking at to the upside. 16400 because we have this nice um, PD vowel that I was looking at. I also was looking at this on the t TPO charts. Okay, we have this um, naked uh, time point of control at 17700. So there's a few levels to the upside that I'm aware of. Okay, locally, of course, we can be looking at coming into the VWAP. But for me, the levels to the upside are, are pretty easily well defined and also the reason why we're finding current support and getting this bounce underway that the daily naked point of control. Um, for me, I would you, you might question why I, have I not taken profits on this daily naked point of control? The way that I'm actually going to manage this is look to see if we reclaim the VWAP. And this is something that I think you're going to find interesting. This is a little bit of an insight that I can give you. OK, uh, and that is why am I not aggressive on the, the first take profit? And it's because I do think that I have a potential swing trade here. I can just look to keep compounding this short. I have an invalidation set now, right? So what I can do is I do think that this has the potential of a swing. E.g. I can get the swing much lower. So I'm not going to be so aggressive on that first take profit. What I could do is if we actually do find a support here and we do get a bounce underway, I'm actually going to secure less profits but nevertheless i'll secure profits on this trade whatever happens next but i will secure less profits with an actual sign of strength with a bounce okay so if we reclaim resistance into support then i can take a take profit one okay and again the theory behind this is i believe i've got a potential swing trade short sure. okay thus i'd like to take profit actually lower but I'm not going to not take any profits and see a win turn into a loss. If we reclaim resistance into support, I will lock in a take profit one a little bit higher. But nevertheless, because I have a good entry, I'm going to be guaranteed profits. OK, so if we start to reclaim that VWAP or that 17400, I'm going to lock in a take profit one and um, yeah, but basically reduce the position size on this. Then I could even look for a compound or if again, then get a sub retracement and a nice bullish CVD that's say forming. Then I can look for an actual long trade here. Again, I'm not a perma bull. I'm not a perma bear. I just come in here, trade the charts and, you know, I look to extract money from the market. Right. That's why I trade this market. It's like I told my team here. Uh, so this is statistics from the chart champions trading challenge account I'm running, which, by the way, if you don't know, is, is this. But it, over the over the past three days, I've actually lost five trades for a total of seven thousand six hundred dollars. And over the past three days, <laughs> same three days, I've only won two trades for a total win of eighty five thousand dollars. OK. This really emphasizes the importance of risk management and only taking the very best risk to reward high probability trades. Uh, trading is my passion, my love and my playground. Um, but what, what I, I just want to talk about this really briefly because I think it just is really great to show. First of all, I've taken more losses than wins over the past few days. You know, I don't ever want you to think that I'm like this crazy guy that just wins every single trade. No, I take losses. You know, obviously people are aware now I've got a market maker account on Bybit. I'm moving a lot of money and as a team, we're moving a lot and we can, you know, trade some levels to the exact dollar. But I'm never going to come in here and say I know exactly what's going to happen. OK, yes, we can have market makers. Yes, we can have a lot of volume. Yes, we can have very good high probabilities, but we never with 100 percent certainty 
certainty know what's going to happen next. Of course, that's not the case, and I'm never going to say that is, is the case, okay? No. I can come in here. I can say we've got a bunch of wells. We're moving a lot of volume. But at the end of the day, we're still losing, and we're winning some trades, okay? Trading is a game of probabilities. And how, even though I've taken only two wins and five losses over the past three days, because for me, this price action has been fairly difficult, actually. Um, I've still walked away with more profit than loss. Why? Because of risk management. It's keeping those losses small. It's actually the way I've been compounding into my trades. You know, my original trade positions have been smaller. And, you know, I've taken a few shorts over the past few days and I've got stopped out of them. OK, but because overall I was expecting higher, I've been able to keep my short positions small. OK, and it's like the way that I got into this. It started off with a small position size and then I've compounded it a few times to get it up to 1.5 million, which for me is still a small position size. But, but nevertheless, I've actually moved a lot of my money to tether right now. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, for me, that's that's the way that we teach. That's the way that I trade. And it's what we absolutely need to all have a focus on. It's having those stop losses. It's having that risk management. And it's able to survive, let's, let's say, going on a string of losses, having a few bad days. And, you know, even, you know, I can say some of the best traders in the world, we take losses. It's absolutely normal. It's nothing to be scared about. It's nothing to be fearful about. It's absolutely normal. It is absolutely normal to take losses trading. There's no need to have shame or fear or anything about this i take losses you watching this will take losses it's part of the game okay the only thing that we need to do is of course have that risk management in place take the highest probability trades and that way even if we've got a low win rate from the past few days we can actually still walk away with more money on the profits that's the most important thing right um, so yeah that's what i wanted to end with and i'll end with one final thing that if you are interested in buy bit again i have no partnership or anything like that with them we obviously are an affiliate only and if you are wanting to look for a new exchange or if you've already gone an exchange just to let you know uh, that Bybit have now released their um, proof of ownership, proof of reserves to show you exactly the balances that they have. So if you'd like to take advantage of this, uh, they're also, by the way, doing a one million dollar prize giveaway, which includes BMW cars, iPhones, cryptos, etc. If you're interested in that, I'll leave the link down below in the description. It's totally up to your discretion. But personally, as you can see, I trade on Bybit. I have my money in here and I'm I'm personally comfortable to trade here. Again, do your own research. I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> you know, you can do your own research on all of this at the end of the day. But if you're interested in that $1 million prize giveaway for their fourth anniversary event, I'll leave the description I'll leave the link in the description below where you can take advantage of our Chart Champions affiliate link for extra spins in their draw for these um, for these giveaways and prizes that they're giving away. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave it all in the link in the description below. OK, and that's a sign up link via the Chart Champions affiliate where you get a little bit of extra bonuses, um, you know, for, for basically being part of CC Pool. Um, so, yeah, that is the final announcement that I wanted to give if this is of interest to you and um yeah, I suppose. Yeah, thank you ever so much. I hope that you've thoroughly enjoyed the video. I hope that you've in understood the way that I'm managing this trade, what I'm looking for next. You know, I don't want you to think I'm an ultra bull, I'm an ultra bear. No, happy to take longs, happy to take shorts. All I want to do in this market is extract money from it at the end of the day. I want to win trades, okay? So, you know, I'm sometimes winning, sometimes losing. But my, my main focus, of course, over the long term is this, um, you know, extracting extracting money from the market, winning my trades and, and having fun, basically, having fun in the market. So, yeah. Yeah, hope that you've really enjoyed if you have you know what to do hit that like button make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video as soon as we release one and if you want to see more from us then of course you can get all of that these type of trade updates these type of things that i'm looking for uh of course the live trading the education all of that over on our website at chartchampions.com that's where you got all of the live streams so if you're lacking confidence, if you are losing a lot of trades, if you're losing more money than you're making, well, you might want to start your education. You might want to trade alongside some of the best traders in the world right now. That includes live trading. That includes daily live streams. That includes educational content. All of that is here for you, as well as the large community at chartchampions.com. That's going to be me signing out. Thank you ever so much. Hope you have a brilliant day ahead. And I will end with the disclaimer. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, Anne. Goodbye.